Chapter 51. Sex Education A serious mistake made by many people is to assume that Christians are against sex education. Another very bad mistake is to assume that only the public school teachers can teach it. The basic question to ask about any educational program, whether it deals with sex, history, or science, is simply this. What kind of standard does the teaching represent? Every course, without exception, represents a philosophy or perspective, and sex education is certainly no exception. A Christian must promote sex education, which begins with the Ten Commandments and the law, Thou shalt not commit adultery, which affirms the biblical standard that marriage alone is the God-ordained area for sexual activity and which upholds biblical sexual morality. Biological facts about sex can be learned in a short time, in an hour or so, if a person is a slow learner, but the basic inner attitude takes years of faith and living. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Ephesians 5.25 Wives, submit yourselves to your own husband as unto the Lord. Ephesians 5.22 The love mutual service, and ability to work together, which makes a couple truly one and heirs together of the grace of life, 1 Peter 3, 7, does not come from any course taught during a semester, but out of a life of faith and growth. The objection to the sex education taught in the school is that it is anti-Christian. It is hostile to biblical faith and law, and is openly so. It claims to be interested only in the biology of sex, but it is, in fact, a presentation of humanistic religious faith and morality. Dr. Mary Calderon, Executive Director of SICUS, which is Sex Information and Education Council of the United States, has stated this new religion and new morality honestly and plainly. Quote, we need new values to establish when and how we should have sexual experience. You are moving beyond your parents, but you can't just move economically or educationally. You must move sexually as well. You must learn how to use sex. This is it. First, to separate yourselves from your parents. Second, to establish a male or female role. And third, to determine values systems. Nobody from up on high determines this. You determine it. Unquote. Moreover, since this religious principle began to be taught in 1966, it has been successful. Many youths have separated themselves from their parents and are living in terms of the new morality taught by these cultists. The fact remains that sex education is impossible without moral and religious education. Sikas and Dr. Calderon recognize this. It is time we did. Christian education, which is radically different, is needed here as elsewhere.